yes, meeting recording is in progress. Okay. So. Now guys, look at this and let me see how fast you are. Just, um, as you know, we always start our class with a warm up. So this is a good warm up for um, the children classes that they know some words. Okay, they know the alphabet and they can make words. So what words can you make with these letters? And if you make three letter word, so it's, you get only one point, but if it's more, you gain more points. So go ahead, what words you can make? Oh yes, made, very good, Crystal. Very good. You can either ask them to write or say it to you. Okay, so let's see what others. No, 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 not in a line, of course. No, enter, map, bravo, good job, poor, okay, done. You're very fast, perfect. So that's going to be a good warm up. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, meanwhile, you're checking their spelling as well and their knowledge about the new words. Okay. So we're going to consult on how to create a positive learning environment because this is very, very, very important for teaching children. Of course, it's important for teaching all the students, but especially children, and we're going to discuss it why. Familiarize with very young learners and young learner characteristics. Talk about learning styles and be able to use different techniques for teaching, which is in this webinar, I guess we have time for 12 of these aims, but we completed in next for next webinar. So guys, there are some rules actually for children classes. So help me to complete the rules. So we said use more. Leading. Eight. Can you see the slide? It yes, start yes, with, yes. Okay, let's start with B. Using word, what aids? Can you complete the word? Bravo, visual aids. There's more visual aids in children classes. And uh, use more language. What is the word? Basic. Uh, you need only three letters, mm -hmm. like using your hands, facial expression. Okay, we said it. But, but, oh no. Body, body <laughs> language. Yes, body language. But your body language is very important. You know why? Do you know why body language is very important? In communication, especially with children. I think it was something like, I don't know, 80% of our language is interpreted through body language. That's true. That's true. Because feeling is very strong for children. The feeling that they get through your body language. You look at them, you smile at them, you use your hands, and you make even shades. Ah, happy or oh no, you know, they just get it. It's very strong to them. Okay, say less, so we cannot blah, 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 explain everything to children. So we always say, say less and more. Act. Bravo, act more. And you know, give them samples. Not just explain it, explain it. Why? Why not? Because based on the level, it, it would be hard for them to understand everything. Maybe the explanation is too complicated for them to understand. Bravo. And, and you know that? They get bored very soon. They get bored very soon. And so it's good to use more. It's good to use 
to write on it? Board. Board, yes. Do you know why? Do you have any ideas why it is important to use board more? Draw or write or put the so It can be related to the first one, visual. It can be visual for them to see something on the board. Mm -hmm. And you grab their attention. Attention. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And break fast into chunks. Big times. Mm -hmm. Into small chunks. That's right. That's right. Just imagine you go to the class and you said, okay, everybody, I want you to open your books and turn to page 35 look at example one read it to yourself and then start to answer to the questions and i want you to follow the example so what happened if you say this instructions they're still thinking about opening their textbooks <laughs> <laughs> yeah they open their textbook and just see around yeah <laughs> to like write it out on the board in steps that's it. So we have to go through the steps. So everybody, open your books. Oh, wait, they open the book. Good. Now turn to page 35, you know, small chunks. That's it. And make sure the activity to students. Makes sense. That's true. Sometimes we say something and it's very obvious to us as adult, but they don't understand it because it's not in their world. They have no idea. They just look at you and they get confused. Well, what are you talking about? Like talking about traffic. And so, okay, everybody knows about traffic. Yes, but while they're in traffic, they're doing, I mean, they're playing video games. Many children like traffic because it's a time that they're uh, playing on their cell phone and nobody Tells them, hey, stop playing on the cell phone. So they like traffic. <laughs> you know that? So it makes sense. It's, it's related to their world. Not to us as adults, but think what makes it sense to children. And start with what is students. We always start in all classes. We always start with what students. Mm, K-N. No. Uh-huh. What do students know? Uh, why in all our classes, it's good to start from the known part, then lead the students to unknown part. What's the reason of this rule? Do you have any ideas? Why it's good to start with the known part, then lead the students to the unknown part. The normal process is um, they should just feel familiarized with something and then you will lead them to something they don't know. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. It's better. We always said, do your best to put your students in a context. So when you are in a context, you can understand it better because you start to feel. Okay. And you use your background knowledge and your experience. You get involved with that issue. So it's, it's easier for you to learn. So that's why we start with the known part. And actually, this is the function of brain that always get the information and archive it. So it's good to get related to what they know. So uh, basically, we help them to remember easier. And start with the class. Start with the whole class. Whole class, exactly. Not only the sharp ones, you know, some students are very sharp. Okay. Some students are very sharp. 
and they just want to talk and talk and talk. But uh, the other students just are very shy. So it's good to have an activity like the activity we have at the very beginning. So everybody, some say it, some type it, no matter how many letters in the world, in the word. So it's good to start. We have you run the activity with the whole class and give the students more. Time more. Thinking time. Bravo, bravo, thinking time. It's very hard to grab everything quickly. You need time to think about it. What is one strategy when you want to give them thinking time? You cannot say in the class, oh, God, three minutes for thinking. <laughs> no. So what's your strategy? I think you could brainstorm ideas either out loud as a class or on a piece of paper or with a partner. Good. Power work and group working. So when they're in pairs, when they're in group, they are just review what they what they have learned exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here's the question: How can we create positive atmosphere in the class? What's your idea? Praising a lot for being successful, but also, you know, if there are times when the students are struggling, to give positive reinforcement and maybe like breaking down the activity, like you said, into steps and more uh, like feasible understanding of the activity. Bravo, very good, very good. Look at the picture. What's your idea of this class? Look at the picture. What's the idea of the class? It's just like total physical response. <laughs> yeah. The teacher is acting and the students are following. Just sitting around in the middle of the students and just singing together. Yeah, that's it. That's the thing. So I'm, I'm one of you guys, not up there and you're here. I'm mm -hmm. here, so we are close and build a very strong and good rapport. No stress. So the students start to feel comfortable in the class and they trust you. They trust you. Thank you. It's very important that children like the atmosphere. You know why? Because most of them, they want to stay at home, watch their cartoons or they do among their own activities. And then their parents take them to the class. So actually it's parents decision to come to the class and learn the language. So at very first, it's very difficult for them. So it's our job, our teacher's job to make such an atmosphere that they love it. And they say, oh, I want to go to this class. It's fun. Okay. But basically they don't think, why should I learn this language? I can communicate. Why, why do I need this language? But if they like it, if they like it and they enjoy the place and the class, they will come. So, it's, so the very first thing when you know your students, the very first step is how can I make this uh, or how can I create positive atmosphere? How can I make this class fun and and nice to the students and my students enjoy the sessions. Okay. So what's the difference between young learners, students and other learners, teenagers and adults? What makes young learners different from other learners? I find that more of like a hands-on approach to learning so whether it be through games or like you said visuals um because their attention span is quite small so it has to be a really engaging right off the bat and i think that really starts with the educator 
you know, if they're very engaged and they have high energy and it's more of like a fun experience rather than something like daunting and hard, you know, like you're not going to sit down a seven-year-old child at a desk and expect them to write out, you know, certain things for 15 minutes. It's just not how, <laughs> how they work. Maybe five minutes, like max, but you have to switch it up, whether it be something tangible that they can link their learning to. Um, or else they'll just, they'll lose interest and it will be a disaster. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you refer to short concentration span. Yeah, that's very true. They get bored and they get distracted very soon, very soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And they definitely need move up activities. It's very, very hard for them to sit for an hour or 90 minutes, even 75 minutes. It's very, very, very hard. So they just need to move. Good, thank you. And um, so average concentration, four years old between eight, I mean, six to eight. And just uh, think for nine years, it's 18. Some people believe it up to 45, but actually no. Between them, they need some kind of move up activities. You cannot keep asking them to do some activity for 45, but they can concentrate for 15 minutes. So basically, just think about when they get I mean, 10 or 11, up to 15 to 18 minutes. Good. Hello, Maide. You join us. Very good. We are working on teaching English to children. Okay, guys, now look at these uh, sentences, the blue ones, okay? And uh, tell me, do you agree or you don't agree? The first one, children learn language better than older ones. Do you agree? Oh, don't agree. Okay, so Hussein, tell me, oh, okay. Very good. I love this. Different ideas. I like that. So, Hussein, tell me why you disagree. Why you say no? Uh, based on my experience, honestly, I don't have much experience uh, teaching uh, children. I've always dealt with adults. But I think uh, as far as I've worked with adults, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I, am, I am the one um, who didn't start learning English from early ages. Okay. So uh, now I've come to this point that um, I, I don't think age matters. Um, I really think uh, even adults can learn um, as, as much as children. Just um, in some, some specific. So, yes. Thank you very much for sure. I could hear you. I could hear you. I would say thank you. Thank you very much. And what about your, my is fine. So what about you, Crystal? Uh, I, agree. I guess why I agree is because um, the brain, when it's is younger in a younger state, is easily mm, manipulated. I guess uh, there's like brain connections that haven't quite formed yet, or, or it's easier for them to be, I guess, maneuvered in a way for language to be understood and grasped quicker. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is like in a mature brain, it's harder to make those connections um, because they are perhaps like set in their ways. <laughs> but I think that if a child is put in an environment where they're able to be exposed to a second language, it's easier for them to pick up rather than if they're in their later years. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Maybe. We are going through this, all of them. So let me hear your uh, ideas first. What would number two? Children and adults learn languages basically in the same way. Agree or disagree? Mm -hmm. Maria and Hussein, 
what do you say? Yeah, exactly. Definitely different ways. Definitely different ways. That's right. It's easier to teach children rather than teenagers or adults. What do you think? Disagree. <laughs> um, I know many people say, <laughs> oh, yeah, disagree. But I, I know still there are some people, they believe teaching to children is much easier. I, I guess it's somehow related to the character of teachers as well. But definitely you have to be very energetic and very creative when you want to teach to children. Children need to learn how to learn. I also think it takes a special person. You're yeah, right. Agree. Yep. I do too. I do too. They don't know. They don't know how to learn. They don't know the rules. Yeah, exactly. They just follow you. They just follow you easily. They only follow you. They imitate what you do in the class. If they like you as a teacher, they follow you. Otherwise, oh my God. Oh my God. You cannot force them to do anything. And the way children learn a foreign language and therefore the way to teach it obviously depends on their developmental stage. I mean, uh, basically it means the way that you teach to a five-year-old student or eight years old, yeah, is different from 11 or 12. But then, do you, why do you agree? You have some ideas, but what's your reason? Uh, I've heard something about this developmental stage, um, specifically for pronunciation. Um, mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. And logical way of thinking. Okay. Just imagine yeah. the one who is seven years old or student eight years old, the way that they look at the things. The way that they analyze or the way that they learn is very, very different from students like 11 or 12. They ask more questions. Uh, when they get to 10, 11, 12, they are more curious about the things and they, they start to analyze what it means. But younger, no. Whatever you say, they just look at you and they laugh and follow. That's, that's the way. Thank you. So, what do your students, young learners, need? What do they need? One could be uh, they need kind of brainability activities like coloring, painting, cutting, pasting. They use their muscles because they don't have very good control of their muscles. So, that's the point to drop many things. Okay, why there are, when they see it under the desk, they just drop their pencils, color pencils. So it's good to, usually in, for your very young learners, the teachers ask them to sit on the mats because they drop everything a lot. 100 times their coat, their bag and everything because they don't have good control on their muscles, especially fine motor muscles. Uh, that we call it fine motor skills. Mm -hmm. it's, so these kind of activities that they learn how to use their hands or throwing balls, tossing balls and just talking. Like, what's your name? They toss the ball and say, what's your name? And say, my name is Elham. And then they toss the ball to the other one. What's your name? And say, my name is Hossein. So at the same time, they are working on their muscles. Um, also, they don't know how to socialize. So that's why in their classes, they, they say, OK, he takes my rubber or eraser or pen or pencils. And 
they think they know how to share things or socialize. So we need to have some activities to teach them how to so socialize. How you can share things with your friends. You have to respect your friends. We have to make our class clean. Or in your online classes, you have to work with your partner in a group. You have to explain everything. And thinking skills, like how to learn. So you need to listen to your CD and you have to repeat it. So let, let's practice. You have to practice in the class when you give them instructions. So here's an example. When I ask you to listen and repeat, it's like this. So I put on my CD or you can ask your mom to put on your CDs or dad or anyone, your brother or older brother or sister, and then play it, pause, repeat. Again, listen, pause, repeat. So you need to give them samples. When you want to answer to these questions, so let's read question number one. So here it said, what can you find on your desk? So what you do, you look at your desk. So what do you have on your desk? Pencils, pen, book. Uh, notebooks, color pencils, very good. So you would start to write, there is a pencil. There are some pens. So you do the first one as an example and you go through the detail. So make it very, very clear for them. Good, what else do they need? Any ideas? One thing that I learned about with working with children is the only way that you're going to have success is if you have a relationship with the child. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going into a classroom and you're have this mindset of being this authority kind of figure, um, learning isn't going to isn't going to happen as easily. I feel like you have to have a connection with the child, whether it be you know, taking some time to get to know them a little bit or do an activity with them individually. Um, that's when I see the most success with learning. So I think having that relationship aspect is really important. Um, and then from there, I feel like learning is a lot easier with children. Bravo. I do agree. I do agree. Loving eye contact, smiling, using their first name, calling their first name, noticing security and joy. Also physical movements like brain breakers or ice breakers and TPR. TPR stands for? What does TPR stands for? Total? Do you remember? Total, let me type it for you. Total physical response. Okay. Total physical response. So you give them the comments and they have to follow and do it and just show it to you. So let's that open the door. They go in there, open the door fly your plane and they say they fly your, your plane or hug your teddy they hug the teddy okay drive your car just like driving your car so total physical response and they love this they love this get engaged engagement is very important as crystal explained and lots of experiences Lots of great experience and let them be creative, not only active, but also creative through different activities and pairs and groups, even individually. And we remember they learn holistically. So it means it's, you know, we know some of our learners are visual or auditory, but they need to see, they need to listen and uh, they need to act all okay and uh, so
so the thing is when it stays acts like a sponge mm -hmm. then like acts like a sponge so uh they grab what you say they follow you they imitate you mm -hmm. so it's it's important that uh, we talk in a way that they can understand so that's why we said it should make sense it should make sense to them so they understand basically what are you saying and what is the activity and it should related to their world so they understand it thank you very much okay here you are so i'm going to give you one minute look at this paragraph fill in the blanks with uh, the words go ahead one minute only Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your ideas. So these students absorb languages perfectly and are very capable to imitate speech sounds. Yeah. So they absorb it. Like I said, it's like a sponge. They follow you and imitate you. They do not work very well in groups. And they respond best to activities and learning situations re relating to their own interests and experiences. So it goes to that rule. Everything should make sense to them. So it should be basically it should be under uh, experience in the world. So they follow you. Although they have a short self-centered attention span. They have patience for repetition of the same activity you were game. Hundred times they ask you for playing Simon Says. They never get tired. <laughs> when they like something, they like to do it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So like singing songs. When they love the songs, they keep asking, oh, let's let's sing the song, let's sing the song. That's the thing. And they become very fluent in it, of course. So it's going to be a very good practice for their fluency, like singing the song or the game. When they like the game, they want to do it again and again. So they become very accurate and fluent. <laughs> Thank you. We remember we talk about the four C's in teaching. Communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. So let me share a video, guys. Give me a minute to share this video. It's a really good video. And it's talking about different activities you can have based on these four Cs. Give him a minute, please. Resume. There we go. So here's that students need the four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. So what kind of activities can we have for each one? Think, okay. You can share your ideas with me actually in the chat box. Okay.
problem-based learning. Don't make it very complicated. Don't make it very complicated. Just put the questions on the board and ask them to think, put them in groups and let's discuss it. Let's have brainstorming. What's your idea about this text? So say how to save your money, okay? How can you save your pocket money? So give them time. Let's have, uh, let's talk about your experiences because many children have, especially when they get to eight, nine, 10, or maybe even younger, they have pocket money. So what do you do with your pocket money? Oh, this is a text about John. And what does he do? What about you? So they have brainstorming and how can you save more? So to start to think, how can I save more? That's, that's one way of working on critical thinking. Projects, they like it. Making posters, do projects, and they love it. So even like drawing, even like drawing, so they can have a very big clipboard or very big size uh, paper, and then start to draw on it mm -hmm. together, color it together, and then talk about it or have a dialogue about that. If they can write something, they write it. So it's like a project together, working on collaboration. So the four C's and creativity, never put the students in a box, never put the students in a box. You have to do this this way or just copy maybe.